progress you can start yeah okay uh, welcome everyone it is my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, professor shikantan again uh, he gave a talk uh, his first talk he talked about uh, geometry of kumar surfaces uh, today title of his talk is uh, k1 and k3 uh, so professor shikantan uh, you may start thanks rakesh and thanks uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, i hope the sound is okay uh, anyway and hopefully we stand with less distractions so in the last lecture uh, we showed that certain rational curves on p2 on a p2 associated in a abelian surface professor can you a little bit bigger zoom it little bit page ah zoom it fingers me so maybe this no i can put it uh, i'll put it uh, horizontally Yeah, better now. Okay. Yeah, since I'm not writing anyway, it's. Uh... Okay. Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So in the last lecture, we study. We showed that you know, given a k, given an abelian surface, you can look at its a model of plus minus one, and that was what we call a Kumar surface, and that was the double cover of P two with six lines, uh, tangent to a conic. And then we showed that uh, well, we stated the theorems of Humbert and uh, Berkanake Wilhelm, which said that if there are additional rational curves passing through some of those points of intersection and meeting the uh, the six lines at uh, points of even multiplicity, then it corresponded to their existing extra cycles in the neuron severity group of the abelian surface, or uh, Equivalently to a certain extent, extra endomorphisms on A because uh, the endomorphism ring of an abelian surface, the fixed points is basically the under the Rosati division is the neuron survey group. So there's they're very closely related. The model is the same thing. Okay, if you have extra elements in neuron survey, then you have extra endomorphisms. The other way may not necessarily be always the case. Okay. But anyway, let's not worry about it. So in this talk, we'll use that construction to get certain cycles in a in a particular motivic homology group, the group is the group H three A Q two. It's a particular group, and it has many definitions. Uh, so the usual definition is K one two. So there's a there's a filtration on the on the higher K groups or on the K groups in general. And one of the graded pieces is called K one two, and this is one of those graded pieces. Another Equivalent definition is uh, Chow two A one, so it's a higher Chow group, okay. Which means essentially certain co-dimension two cycles on A cross P one, subject to some additional uh, conditions, okay. And the third is H one A K two. I won't state what that is, but anyway, uh, the we'll more or less use the, these. Well, actually, this description mostly for. Uh, what we look at, okay? How we describe it, okay? So, uh, yeah, our aim is to construct certain uh, elements of this group, okay? So why do we care, firstly? So what are these groups? So these motivic cohomology groups were defined by, I think it's Balenson, though it might be Rothendieck, I don't know. It's a bit hard to say, but they, they explain conjectures on special values, okay? So, I mean, at a very crude level, Okay, if you look at a special value of an L function, right, of an algebraic variety, you have H i x and at the value at j, right? So you have a cohomology group and you have a value j, okay? And in some sense, more or less, it corresponds to one of these H m a q b for some a and b, which are sort of linearly uh, dependent on i and j, okay? That's very that means more or less the order of the zero or pole is equal to the dimension of this group. And then some sort of number you can get out of this group is equal to the value suitably interpreted. So now we won't talk about that. It's a bit of, it's, it's a complicated subject in itself and we won't get into that, okay? But we will be mostly concerned with the group. Uh, yeah, so, all this about special values, of course, has to do when you have a smooth projective variety 
over a number field, and then you talk about that. But you can define these motivic cohomology groups in much greater generality. In particular, we'll be looking at uh, the group A3, A eta Q2, okay, which is where A eta is the generic fiber of a family of abelian surfaces over a modular variety. Okay, so model is a universal family over a, a, a Shimura curve or a modular curve or uh, well, when I say abelian surface over a modular, variety, modular curve, I mean you take the elliptic curve and you take E cross E over the base. So at any point, the fiber is E cross E, E tau. Over a point tau, the fiber will be E tau cross E tau. Okay. So what we will do is construct elements in this group, in this, in this generality, but actually the construction works in the arithmetical case as well. Uh, so... In the arithmetic case, it might have something to do with special values well functions. That remains to be seen. I mean, there is something more to be said in that case, okay? But um, we won't talk about that uh, except for this part, okay? So in some sense, uh, you have to be slightly more careful. You have to talk about integral motivic cohomology and so on. I don't want to go into that, okay? So, um, so I mean, in as much as in, for example, what comes into the special value, the zeta function is the is the units in the number field and not k star. And this is more like k star, the k is the number field. It's not ok star, it's k star. So you need the analog of ok star. Okay. So what do these, uh, what, yeah, so why do you care? We'll come to why do we care about these things later on, but first we'll describe the construction, what they look like first. Okay. So, uh, cycles in the group H3 motivic XQ2, where X is the surface, have the following presentation. Okay. They are sums of the form uh, summation CI FI, where CI is a curve on X and FI are functions on CI, such that the divisor, the sum of the divisor is zero. So, um, right? And then you have certain relations coming in a certain way. So how does it look? So it's also the group Chow 2 A1. Chow 2 A1 means co-dimension two cycles on X cross P1, right? So if you're given a curve and some functions with this property, right? How do you get a co-dimension two function? You look at the uh, co-dimension two cycle, you look at the graph, right? The graph of this function will be something in X cross P1, okay? And then the, the conditional summation div fi is equal to zero will correspond to the other condition which I have not mentioned. Okay, and so um, this group has is presented by such elements. Okay, and there are certain relations which I won't get into because, well, we want to construct elements and we'll show they're non-trivial, but we don't have to worry about the relations at the moment. Okay, so we'll just have to, we'll have to give we'll give them in terms of this information. So how do you get such elements? Okay, the key thing, of course, is to have some function satisfy this condition. So that means if I draw a picture, you know, you have a bunch of curves like this, something like this, and your function was divided this minus this and this minus this, and they sort of cancel out, <coughs> right? Okay, if you have a function whose divisor, say, this point is P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Okay, so you could suppose you had a function with divisor p1 minus p2, another function on this, uh, let's call it guy c1, c2, c3, c4, and c5. Suppose this is some sort of configuration, right? You had a function with divisor on c1 with divisor p1 minus p2, on c2 with p3 minus p2. Ah, so p1 minus p2, and then p2 minus p3, and p3 minus p4, p4 minus p5 and P5 minus P1, then they would cancel out to give you something, right? If if you had such functions, you probably don't, if unless your CIs are rational functions, not that. okay? Rational, rational curves, not functions, okay? That's one, but again, you can build those things. They may not be interesting from whatever point of view, what we mean by interesting. They could be cycles in this thing, but they may not be interesting cycles, okay? But one simple way is to take functions whose divisor is just zero, which is constant functions, right? Okay, so just take a curve and a constant function 
and then the condition is trivially satisfied. Okay, because that summation div fi equal to zero condition doesn't, uh, I mean, it's just zero. The left hand side is just zero, right? Okay. So these are called decomposable cycles because there's a product structure on this motivic cohomology groups from the group uh, H2x uh, q1 tensored with h1 x q1 to h3 so in other words the indices add up or if you like chow one, one chow one x tensor with chow one one x which goes to chow two x one so again the indices just add up one plus one gives you two and zero this is just zero comma zero okay. right and this is just thick and this is k star so it maps to this. so this thick is uh, of course curve c and these are const non-constant functions and they will go to c comma a so, so these are sort of coming from lower dimensions in some ways. They're from products, right? Okay. So they're not so interesting from the point of view of, uh, um, from our point of view. I mean, they're they're somewhat simpler, right? So yeah, as I was, I actually left some space here so I could draw pictures, but I guess I drew it on the side there. Okay. So we take this situation, this group. Uh, um, yeah, I can write that here. Um, you take H three M X Q two modulo the H three M X Q two decompose, which is uh, the image of the product product uh, of those lower dimensional guys, right? And that you call the group of indecomposable cycles H three. M X Q2 in right, and the point is you want something which is non trivial in this group because it's genuinely new uh, cycle, it doesn't come from some product structure below. Okay, so that's called the group of indecomposable cycles. And what you do is construct certain indecomposable cycles. Okay, so uh, yeah, in the case of P2, right. All cycles are decomposable. The setting is an old theorem of Coleothelian and Raskin, or maybe it's kind of simpler than that. But um, it's just that everything is a uh, comes from products. Okay, um, right. But what are other examples? Okay. So suppose C has a curve with a function f with divisor n p minus n q for some p and q. Okay. For example, if you take uh, a genus two curve, an f a hyperelliptic function, and uh, you take two uh, two of the ramification points and you take their difference. Then you have a function whose divisor is two p minus two q. Okay, or actually you don't need a genus two curve. You just need a hyperelliptic function on a uh, on any genus genus g hyperelliptic curve, and you can do this. Okay. On another example is when you have a modular curve and you take two cusps. Then the theorem of Manin and Rydfeld says that any divisor of degree zero on the cusp distortion. So you have a function with divisor NP minus NQ for some N, right? A third example is when you take Fermat curves and you take uh, again the, the, so to say, trivial solution of Fermat's last theorem. Again, those trivial solutions of Fermat's last theorem, the 3N trivial solution, are called uh, cusps in some sense. Uh, they're not really cusps, but they're cusps if you push it out the upper plane by a non congruent subgroup, but that's a different story. But uh, they also have the property that any device of degree zero on them is torsion. That's a theorem of Rolick. And so you can find examples of curves like this, right? So if you have a curve with a function like this, then you can build a higher Chow cycle in this manner, or a motivic cycle in this manner. Take C cross P, suppose your divisor is, uh, is uh, so div F is, is np minus nq, right? Then you take uh, uh, something like this, I suppose. Uh, right? uh, this is the diagonal. So this is p comma p, q comma q, and then this is uh, uh, so c cross p and uh, f cross p, and uh, q cross c and q cross f. So the divisor of on C cross P of F cross P, that means the function F being considered the function on C cross P, we'll have divisor 
n times p comma p minus n times q comma p. So this point is q comma p, I suppose. Okay. Uh, right? And so you'll have, uh, uh, yeah, this is c cross p and this is q cross c. Okay? So here you'll have a function whose divisor is, is uh, uh, this minus this, right? And then your function whose divisor is uh, this minus this and this, this. And then you just see that they um, uh, cancel out. So you have divisor zero. So this gives you uh, an example of a motivic cycle or higher Chow cycle, okay? This is due to, I think it's maybe due to block in the case of X not 37, okay? When he wanted to do it for uh, proving uh, what is what became known as the block valence in conjecture, in some case. Okay. And uh, again, another example is uh, if you take C cross C uh, to the Jacobian, you have a map from X comma Y going to X minus Y, then the image of this cycle, which is in, uh, ah, oh, sorry, I didn't say it. this is a motivic cycle in, this is an element of H3M of C cross C. Q2, right? And then you can push it down to the Jacobian and you get another cycle, which is defined by Colino, sort of by them, different methods. In the case when your C is a hyperelliptic curve, okay? But again, it's not clear if these cycles are indecomposable. Just looking at it, you can't say so easily, okay? For example, if you take an elliptic curve C and you do this business, it turns out in that case, there are no indecomposable cycles. So therefore the cycle is not indecomposable. Okay, it's actually decomposable. So it may not be obvious if a cycle is decomposable or indecomposable. Then another way is the following. Uh, if Q contain X is a nodal rational curve with a node at a point P and X tilde is the uh, uh, blow up at P, okay, with external fiber, E P, uh, sorry, X tilde is the blow up of X at uh, P with external fiber EP, right? Which is the P one. Then let Q tilde be the strict transform. So you'll have this curve Q, which has a node here. And then when you blow it up, uh, you have this uh, uh, strict transform, which will meet EP, the, the fiber at two points, P one and P two, right? If it's an ordinary node, right? Otherwise you do it a few times if you have a regular node. I mean, a, a node of higher order, right? Okay. And then you take, since it's a rational curve, there is a function on Q tilde with divisor P1 minus P2. And you have a, a function G on EP with divisor P2 minus P1, okay? And so this Q, Q tilde comma F and EP comma G will give you an element of the motor cohomology of the blow up, okay? Or you can push it down and get something in the motor cohomology of X, but whatever, we'll actually use this, okay? This is the construction we'll use. And this relies on the fact that Q tilde is a rational curve, right? Because otherwise you won't have uh, uh, functions. I mean, you might have functions, but it may be a little harder. So you can actually work in a slightly greater generality, but it's if you have a nodal rational curve, then you can build such a motivic cycle, okay? Hmm. So motivic cycles of this type are basically like elements of K star, K where K is a field, right? Not, they're sort of units, the analogs of, I mean, not exactly units, units would be an OK star, but K star being uh, units in the field, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, so there is a, a localization sequence which relates this group with uh, the regular Chow groups, the, I mean, this higher Chow group, with the regular Chow groups of uh, some related things, okay? So for instance, if D is a divisor on X and U is X minus D, then one has a localization sequence uh, which goes from uh, Chow P D to Chow P plus one X. So, a cotivation P cycle on D will be a cotivation P plus one cycle on X, which will be zero in in uh, in the complement. Okay, right. But in fact, this this is not exact on the left. So this is inside a long exact sequence. 
called the long exact localization sequence, which goes from this higher Chow group, Chow P plus one U1, and there's a boundary map to Chow PD and Chow P plus one X and then Chow P uh, plus one U, right? Okay. So, uh, so given our element in, in our case, in, an in a group like this, we can look at its boundary, right? Okay. So what is our situation now? Uh, yeah. So the case we are primarily concerned with is when uh, A is a universal family of abelian surfaces over a modular or Shimura curve. Okay. And when, I, when it's a modular curve, you're looking at E cross E over S, right? Okay. So in other words, the fiber or point uh, tau will be E tau cross E, e tau. Okay. So then if you if eta is a generic point of S, okay, one has uh, the motive, the long exact localization sequence will go like this uh, from chow to A eta one, which is where we construct our elements. The boundary map will go to direct sum over all X in, uh, in sorry, X in S or, or points on S, right? Of chow one of AX. And it'll go to chow two of uh, A, which means script A, which is the universal, the compact wide uh, uh, modular threefold. In other words, the, the total space. Okay. Right. And what is this map? Well, see, in the case when uh, uh, this is essentially the divisor or the boundary, it's just the divisor. Okay. So if summation CIFI is an element of chow two A1, then D of that map is the divisor of F on the closure of CI in the total space. So, so you'll have some, you know, you have something like this, some, something like this. You have a, a function whose divisor say maybe these two things. And when you take the closure, you know, it might be the case that this, the closure of the C will have some components, will gain some components, okay? And maybe this the closure of this guy will go here and here, right? Okay. So when you look at the divisor, it'll be this guy, right? Plus possibly it'll include some components here. Okay. Some of the special components of the fibers. Okay. But then you also have the condition summation div fi is equal to zero. That means that the uh, uh, closure of this guy is zero. So that means when you take the sum of all the cycles, the horizontal components will be, will be zero and you'll be left with only vertical components, okay? Which are elements of this group, uh, uh, chow one uh, AX, okay? So you, you, you will get, so, so, uh, right, right. So somehow by starting with, a motivic cycle of the type in the generic fiber, when you take its boundary, you get sort of a sum of cycles supported in special fibers, okay? And in fact, that sum goes to zero in uh, uh, the total space, in chow, the chow group of the total space, okay? Okay, so what is it if you have a decomposable element? So decomposable element means it's C comma A, where A is a constant function. So a constant function means it's a function on the base. Okay, so non-zero in, in case of the base, which means in this case, the base is a, a, a modular curve or a, just a curve in general. Okay, it'll be some function on that, right? So it has some divisor of A will be some summation AXX, some bunch of points, right? So then the boundary of C comma A is just uh, the sum of AX times the restriction of C to the fiber at AX. So in other words, you have something like this. So, so you'll have say here and your, there's no horizontal guy, horizontal guy, but your horizontal guy has a, has a zero here maybe and maybe a pole here or something, okay? So I can look at CX, this is the this is some X and this is Y. And uh, CX is the fiber, so this is CX and this is CY. So you will get something like CX minus CY as your uh, boundary, okay? 
uh, if your function it has x minus y, right? Okay. So in particular, uh, if you take a decomposable element, right, then the boundary only involves the restriction of cycles on the generic fiber, right? You can't get so suppose uh, I mean it just involves this. Sub, in this picture, as I said, you know, your some fibers you might have more than one component, okay, and uh, or you might yeah you might have more than one component, and uh, um, uh, you can't get those components in the boundaries of decomposable cycles. You can get the whole thing. You can get the sum of components. It has to be something which comes as the restriction, but you can't get a component of the restriction. Okay, so so now. Yeah, we'll come to that. I mean, so for example, if you have a some cycle which is coming from a say a genus two curve, okay, then when the, and so it lies in the Jacobian of the, of the genus two curve. When that Jacobian becomes a product of two elliptic curves, the genus two curve will break up into a sum of two elliptic curves. But if you have a decomposable cycle, you can only get e one plus e two. You can't get e one in the boundary. Or E2. Okay. So suppose you, so conversely, if you have a cycle such as the boundary involves the exceptional cycle, exceptional cycles in a non trivial manner, then it has to be indecomposable. It can't be coming as a product. Okay. So that's how you test in some sense for indecomposability. You can compute the boundary and show it's a non trivial boundary involving components of the fibers, then. Uh, uh, then you're into it. Another remark is that, see, the localization sequence, as I said, <clears throat> in this case, it goes from this group and then gives you a bunch of cycles in this thing. And then that stuff goes to zero in this group. So this is co-dimension two cycles on A, right? So this can be thought of as the space of relations between co-dimension two cycles. In fact, when you have chow one, eta one, that's just the space of functions, which is relations between points or co-dimension one cycles on a curve, right? Okay. If you have a, a so in general, chow p a eta or it should be a, a eta to some suitable power. I mean the right dimensions. Okay. Yeah, a eta to the something like that. Okay. Is the space of relations among co-dimension p cycles. So chow one. Uh, yeah, p minus one. Chow, chow one of eta one is just functions on x, which is relations among codin one cycles on x. Right, right. points. Right, that's what a function is. Right, the the Jacobian is. Uh, is the divisors modulo divisor of degree zero modulo uh, rational? Sorry, no. The chow one is just the divisor of degree zero modulo. Sorry, divisors modulo rational groups, right? Okay. So basically, this group uh, chow p or chow two a chow two x one or chow p x one in this examples is the space of relations among co-dimension p cycles. So sometimes uh, they used to, I mean, uh, Rakesh was asking about co-dimension two. Sometimes you use this to prove some co-dimension two cycles are torsion. Like that's, that's a common usage of these motivic cycles. Okay. So how do we construct these cycles? Okay. So recall that last time to an abelian surface A, we associate a Kuma surface Ka, right? And the Kuma K3 surface is K tilde A by blowing up those 16 points. And then we had this special P2A, which had six lines L1 through L6, such that they're tangent to a conic, right? Okay. And these six lines meet at 15 points QIJ. Uh, so QIJ is Li intersect LJ. Right, so you had some picture like this. And they'll meet at 15, 16, 15 points, which are the image of the remaining two torsion points. 
Okay. And the theorem of Birkenhake, Willem, and Humbert says that if AX has multiplication by Z root delta for certain deltas, right? Then there is a rational curve Q of some degree D uh, passing through some K of those points QIJ and meeting the sextic uh, product Li at all other points with even multiplicity. Okay. So, for example, there's a theorem of Humbert, there's a conic passing through five points uh, QIJ and meeting the sixth line uh, tangentially. Okay. So, this is a criteria for their existing an extra element uh, in the neuron series. So all these having multiplication by Z root delta is equivalent to saying there's an uh, extra element in the neuron series whose Humbert invariant whose square is basically delta, okay? Whose self-intersection number is delta, okay? Uh, or negative self delta, right? Okay. So how do you get this extra cycle? Well, uh, maybe I should go back to where I have some space to draw a picture. Okay. So, you know, we had a map pi from uh, K2, Ka to uh, P2, right? Okay, which is the projection. And you have Q sitting inside here. And uh, you pull it back and it turns out you'll get two components, okay? And if you pull back one of those components, uh, you get two components because it was an unramified double cover. Uh, the normalization is an unramified double cover. So you get two components because all the, all the ramified points, all the sing are singular. All the ramified points are singular. So when you go to the normalization, they just stop being ramified as well. Okay, so you have an unramified double cover of uh, 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 P1 because Q is a rational curve, right? And so you have uh, two components and Q1 and Q2, and then either, I mean, then you push it down to Ka, that might be in the normalization, you put it there. You still have two components and one of those components you can pull back to give you the cycle you want. Okay. So now using this, we can prove the following theorem about motivic cycles. So we have the following theorem. Let A eta be the generic abelian surface over a Ziegel model of threefold S22. Then for delta, which is delta D comma K, depending on that degree and K, uh, there is a cycle in this motivic cohomology group such that its boundary is supported in the fibers over a component of H delta. So H delta, recall, is the Humbert surface of invariant delta. It's the place where you have these extra motivic cycles, okay? Um, and the boundary of this uh, element that we consider, that we construct, has, consists of this extra cycle. So in particular, so uh, this cycle, let's call it Z delta. Right? So we'll construct a cycle Z delta, Right, such so that the boundary of Z delta sort of uh, involves uh, involves these uh, Q, uh, whatever Q delta, one of those components is some A times Q delta of some A naught equal to more, more or less. I mean, up to a decomposition, it'll be something like that. Okay, so therefore, it's so in particular, you see, Q delta is not the restriction of a cycle in the generic fiber. Okay. Uh, because uh, it's not defined everywhere. Q delta is only defined over H delta, right? So um, this gives you indecomposable cycle. So to get an idea of the proof, we look at the case of delta equal to five, right? So let's say, say you take the points Q12, uh, Q23, Q34, Q45, and Q51. Here are five points, right? And uh, so there's a general theorem that you always have a conic passing through five points in P2, right? That's a generalization of the fact that you always have a line passing through uh, two points, right? Okay. So uh, now you always have this conic, but it need not, so you'll have this, uh, you'll, have some, uh, you'll have some conic like this, right? Passing through these points, uh, uh, say Q1, 2, Q2, 3, Q3, 4, uh, Q4, 5, and Q5, 1, right? You always have this. But then if I take the, suppose this is line L6, it'll likely just meet at two points, okay, in general. 
this is S, some S1 and S2, right? If I take a general conic passing through these uh, five point, uh, these five distinguished points, it need not meet the sixth line. Uh, uh, ah, you can easily see that there has to be, I, I say the sixth line because it can't meet L1 through L5 at any other point. So it has to be L6, right? Okay. Um, um, so, it ha so if it's tangent, it means that you have this extra multiplication by Z root pi, but in general, it, it, you always have this conic and it may meet at two points, okay? But now you can do the same thing. You can take the double cover of this guy and take the normalization, right? Um, right? It will be all these points, oops, sorry. Um, all these points will get, uh, they will, I mean, the ramification points of this double cover will be these Q1 to Q5, uh, Q1 to Q2, Q3, these five, these five points, plus this point and this point, right? But when I go to the normalization, these, these points will stop being uh, ramified, right? But these will still remain. So you'll have, these are smooth points, so they don't get affected by the normalization, right? Okay. So you have a double cover ramified at two points, which is an irreducible conic, okay? So in particular, you get an irreducible rational curve on Ka, which has nodes, <coughs> sorry, yeah, you'll have an irreducible rational curve on, 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 on when you go all the way up to the, uh, uh, yeah, when you go to K tilde A or you go to wherever, after you do the normalization process, okay? Uh, and, on Ka, you will have an usable rational curve, which has nodes at the points Q1, 2, up to Q5, Q5 1, right? Um, so the double cover will be something like this. It'll have, two compo it'll have one component, but it'll be like, uh, I can't tell. I don't know which one. It should have uh, nodes, right? So. Okay. Maybe it's not in the picture. Okay, right. Okay, so it'll have nodes at these uh, these points lying over Q1 to Q5. Okay, right. Now again, so now you're in a situation where when you blow up one of these nodes, right, you can do the earlier construction because you have a nodal rational curve. You blow it up, uh, and uh, uh, you take a function on the normal on the, on the blower on the on the strict transform, and uh, uh, take the exception fiber and you build something there, right? Okay. So doing this, you can construct an element like, which we call uh, uh, Z five, okay, in H uh, M K tilde A Q two, H three M K tilde A Q two. This is the Kuma. This is the K three surface, okay, and one can see without too much difficulty that when the two points S1 and S2 come together, that means it's tangent. Again, that becomes a nodal point again, and you're blowing it up. So therefore you, uh, uh, sorry, you, you're, yeah, it's a ramification point. So you'll blow it up and it's nodal. So again, you'll get two components and you can see with some difficulty or without some too much difficulty. So the boundary is basically A times some Q1 minus Q2 for some A not equal to zero, where Q1 and Q2 are the two uh, curves that exist in the case of Q5, okay? Uh, when you have multiplication by Z, by Z root five, okay? So in particular, this says that this cycle is indecomposable, okay? And uh, this cycle, the way we have defined it, is defined as long as P2A doesn't have that special configuration, right? When does that special configuration happen? Well, when the two points become tangent to L6, okay? And that happens on a component of H5, okay? So in fact, you can see, you know, we have chosen Q1 to Q, Q2, 3, Q3, 4, Q4, 5, Q5, 1. You can choose any five points, right? And then there'll be a sixth line, right? So uh, um, basically there are six components of H5 and this guy will give you uh, corresponding to the six lines, and each uh, you'll have sort of six different cycles correspond to each component. Okay. 
Okay. So what was used here? We use the fact that there's always a conic passing through five points, right? Okay. So in general, uh, um, yeah. If you take this, so Birkenek and Willem say there is a rational curve of some degree d, right? That <coughs> that that uh, that curve Q will meet uh, the product of the six lines Li at six d points. Okay. But either we have said it's meeting at the point Q, Qij, which is a double point, or at points of even multiplicity. So therefore, there are at most three D points, right? Okay. But then you have the following theorem from enumerative geometry. Okay. So let N D denote the number of rational curves passing through three D minus one points in general position, right? Uh, uh, of degree D. This is rational curves of degree D. Right? Okay. Then N D is a finite non-zero number. I mean, I say it in this way, it's a it's a greatly studied number. Okay. But uh, the main point is that it's it's a finite non-zero number. So there always exists a rational curve of degree D passing through 3D minus one points in general position. So for example, when 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 D is equal to one, 3D minus one is uh, is two. And there always is a line passing through any two points in general position, right? If uh, d is equal to two, then three d minus one is five, and I just state that there's always a conic passing through. And for for three, uh, there it so in both of these cases there's exactly one, right? Uh, but for uh, for uh, uh, if I take a d equal to three, then it's eight points, right? And it turns out there are twelve uh, cubics. These are rational cubics, so that means they have to have other singular points, but that doesn't matter. Okay, right? And the exact number N D is uh, is a famous uh, uh, formula of conservation, Manin and Duan Tian um, from the nineties, early nineties. I think it was quite a big deal then. Okay, but we don't. I mean, I don't know what the relevance of that is at the moment. Okay, and actually, we kind of need something slightly different, which is like, I mean. Uh, uh, we need to take, say, uh, points which pass through some number of points and are tangent or meet the other points at some higher multiplicities. So, but that's a special case of this, right? Okay. So, for example, if you take, uh, if I take the number of conics passing through four points and tangent to a line, there are two conics. Okay. It's, so, there are more conics satisfying that condition. Maybe it's not hard to see. Okay, right. So now the idea is we look at our Q, which is given by, let's call it Q delta, which is given by Birkenhack and Willem, right? Okay. And you throw out one of the points, which is say QIJ, one of the QIJs, which is passes through. Okay. And that gives you, so now earlier you had 3D points, now you have 3D minus one points. Then you always have a rational curve of degree D passing through those things. Okay. And then, uh, uh, use that rational curve and you take the double, you do the same thing basically as you do for, for delta equal to five, right? And you can build a motivic cycle and then without too much difficulty, you can see that there is a, its boundary is again uh, supported on where the, those two, those points come together, okay? So actually in the example, I, 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 uh, I took uh, uh, in the case of Q equal to five, I took the passing through four points, five points, and then not tangent to a line, right? At this conic like this, and then I line line six with so two points, right? But actually, you can also take instead. You can say, uh, uh, say not passing to this point. So you'll have uh, it'll meet. Uh, it'll meet. So sorry. So suppose not find. So you have. Uh, Say L1 and L2, right? Then your conic, you can choose a conic which is tangent to L6, but not meeting Q12, right? So it's, oops. Okay. And then we'll meet L1 at some, at Q23. Sorry, uh, L1 at Q, sorry, meet L1 at uh, Q51 and this other point. 
and it'll meet L2 at say Q23. Uh, and this other point. But when those points come together, you'll be in this special configuration. And, and the same argument works. You can use this, this rational curve instead of that rational curve. Okay. So that's what I'm I'm saying that that's how it generalizes better than because tangent is okay if you have a higher order thing then when you throw it out you might get more points i don't think it's a very serious problem okay but the point is the main point is that given this delta of the form uh determined by uh burke and hacker and Willem, um you have a motivic cycle with boundary precisely when there is a cycle of invariant delta So now we'll connect this with uh, some other uh, stuff, which is uh, at first seemingly unrelated, which is Green's functions and regulate and uh, and uh, gross Zaglia. Okay. So, so if X is a predictive variety, right? Uh, Billison define a higher regulator map to a real vector space, generalizing the Dirichlet regulator. So Dirichlet regulator is log of absolute value of a or something like that, okay. So he defined, uh, in this case, in, in our case of uh, uh, this motivic cohomology group, this regulator go, goes through what's called the real Deline cohomology group, H3 Deline X R2. And it's a current on one one forms, okay. Right. So in our case, we have a family of surfaces and a cycle in the generic fiber, right, okay. So what does it mean to be a cycle in the generic fiber? It means when I restrict to most special fibers, I'll get a cycle there. Right? So you have X and then you have a point, say, say tau, right? And X tau is a fiber. If I take my cycle Z and I restrict to X tau, <clears throat> unless tau lies in the boundary, it's going to be uh, um, an element of this. So for example, if I take, a, what's the function? A function is an element of this motivic commonly group of the generic point. Right now, at most points, I can look at the value f of z, which is a non zero number. It's an element c star, which is an element of the motivic commerce group of that point. Okay, right? It's only when you have a when it's zero or infinity that you have a problem. Right? So, similarly, here, uh, if you have a cycle in the generic fiber, in most fibers, it'll give you a perfectly good uh, cycle. Right? Okay. So now if you have a family of one one forms, okay, in the like this, okay, and you look at the regulator of this, the Z tau, evaluate, it's a it's a current on one one forms, evaluate in this one one form, you get some sort of function. Okay, let's call it function G T. Right. And one might wonder what this function G tau is. So it's a function of tau. Right? So you have a parameter, you, you have a family of surface or a curve, say, like a modular <coughs> family of a beam surface or a modular. Curve or a Shimura curve or something, and um, you get some sort of function. You might wonder what this function is, right? So uh, let's try to analyze it. Okay. So uh, if A, which is uh, an S, is a modular curve, when you have E cross E over S, right? Then there are four one one forms possible. Okay. Three of them are represented by algebraic cycle. One is the class of E cross zero. The other is class of zero cross E, and the third is the class of the diagonal. Okay. And uh, the fourth is the symmetric square. Okay. So if you have a whole, oh, okay, uh, yeah, you have a holomorphic one form on E such that the, uh, it, it, it satisfies integral E over E tau omega omega bar is one, that's volume one. Uh, then if you have CM, by some z root d, right? There is a fourth cycle in the neuron survey group of, uh, of that. In other words, so generically you have three cycles, but over a CM point you have a fourth cycle, right? The fourth cycle is given by the graph of the CM of the complex multiplication, or actually more precisely, you can choose it so that uh, you define it to be maybe uh, the graph. Uh, oops. It's it's the graph minus the graph of minus d. Okay. You, you define it, you call it S tau, 
and you also choose it to be a multiple that says that S tau squared is one. Then it turns out that the class of that S tau is basically a particular cycle. It's uh, integral, it's, it's omega one tau, omega two tau bar plus omega uh, one tau bar omega two uh, times some constant, which doesn't depend on tau. Okay, so there's some one one form eta tau. So all this to say is that there is a one one form eta tau in the generic fiber, such that when you restrict a CM cycle, it gives you the C, sorry, if you restrict a CM fiber, you get the class of the CM cycle. Okay, the CM cycle being a particular cycle, which is only defined in the uh, neuron cell group of the special fibers. Okay, so this is the CM cycle, is the analog of a CM point in higher dimensions. Okay, uh, so a CM point is a point where you have complex multiplication, and here you're actually taking this that the extra complex multiplication, getting some sort of cycle out of it, and you call that the CM cycle. Okay, this S tau turns out to be a null homologous cycle in the total space. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, Zhang proved that. Um, if uh, GX is a Green's current associated to SX, and if, if eta tau is a, as before, when you evaluate this Green's current on eta uh, eta tau or eta y, okay, you get the value of a higher Green's function. So the GX X is a CM point, right? Uh, uh, and you look at SX, the CM cycle at that CM point, and you take the corresponding Green's function of that and you evaluate it at eta y, where eta y is this particular one one form which is defined everywhere. Okay, but at a CM point, it's actually represented by a CM cycle. But uh, you get so for y not equal to x, I suppose, right? You get the you get this value of what's called the higher Green's function. Okay. So g2 xy is, uh, I mean. The definition is a bit, uh, I mean, if I, write, I can write it down, but it's just unilluminating, okay? Uh, well, at least to me, <laughs> maybe to others it's less. But G2 XY is the higher Green's function of weight two, which is defined by gross Zagier in their famous uh, paper. Okay. Now, what is that called to indecomposable cycles? Okay. So, as I said, if you have an indecomposable cycle, right? Uh, and you look at its boundary. So suppose you have an indecomposable cycle in this family of abelian surfaces over a modular curve, right? Then uh, its boundary is going to involve cycles which are not there in the generic fiber. So generically, there are three cycles. Okay, this E cross zero, zero cross E and the diagonal. But whenever there's an extra cycle, it has to correspond to uh, multiplication by uh, to a product of two ellipticals with complex multiplication. That's the theorem of Shioda. So, <clears throat> so you can so suppose you have an indicable cycle, okay, and the boundary is some summation ax sx where ax is some cm point, okay, right? Then it turns out that the regulator of this of this uh, this indicable cycle. Is a sum of the Green's current of the cycle, cycles appearing the boundary. So you have uh, the regulator of Z evaluated on this form eta y is half summation ax g2 xy, okay, where uh, the boundary here is uh, ax sx. Right? So this is just an analog of the fact that uh, you know if you take a function uh, and you look at the the weight one Green's function, which was, I guess, defined by gross Zagier as well, or maybe it's an older classical thing, right? Then log of absolute F is equal to half, summation half AX G1 XY, right? Okay. Or maybe if you're familiar with uh, uh, these Eisenstein series, uh, non holomorphic Eisenstein series, uh, you get that if you have a modular unit, uh, <coughs> which is, uh, a function whose divisor is on the cusp, you can write log of absolute value of the modular unit as a sum of uh, ax 
GP, uh, you know, AX, G, uh, E, E1, XY, where E1 is a certain non holomorphic uh, Eisenstein series, okay, which is actually turns out to be the Green's function of those curves. Okay, that's an aside. Okay, so this is a uh, well known thing when you, I mean, whenever you come across Green's function, the Green's function of a, of a function is given by this. Okay, uh, so this is a higher analog of that, right? Okay, so now a consequence of this is the following. So if ooh, Z is a motivic cycle in this, and if Y is a CM point uh, outside the support of, D, of the boundary of Z, Right, so if dz is some summation ax zx, then summation ax g2 x comma y is the log of an algebraic number. Okay, uh, so this is equal to uh, log of absolute value of some g. Yeah. Okay, some alpha, let's call it alpha log. Okay. Right. Why is that? Because, um, yeah, maybe you put alpha y, you put, you put on y. Okay. So the reason for this is that at a CM point outside the support, if I restrict my uh, cycle, I get a cycle in the motivic cohomology of the uh, of the CM of that fiber a y, right? Okay. As I said, in most fibers. As long as it's not in the boundary, you get a perfectly good motivic cycle. Okay. And eta y is the class of this CM cycle there, right? Which is in which is a co-dimension one cycle. So it's in H2 motivic AYQ1, which is just a uh, should I this way? This is uh, chow two a y one, and this is just chow one a y. Okay. And so when I take the regulator, evaluate on that thing, that's essentially the same as the regulator of the intersection of these two algebraic cycles. Okay, so this group is, so the intersect to give you an element of Chow three, a y one. Okay, now a y is a surface, so Chow three a y one is co-dimension three cycles on a y cross p one, which is a bunch of points. On a y, if you look at what it means, it's three cycles on a on a three dimensional uh, variety, right? So then the only choice of the regulator has to be something like log of absolute value, okay? And so because of that, it kind of says that the uh, uh, value of this chap is uh, the log of an algebraic number, okay? So explicitly, if you have some summation C i f i, right, then you get you'll get some uh, value like this. Okay. So now, what happened was Gross and Zagier had conjectured that values of certain linear combination of higher Green's functions, which is what we have here, should be logs of algebraic numbers at C m point. But their linear combinations were coming from relations between coefficients of modular forms. Okay, uh, which can be thought of, so a, a relation between coefficient and modular forms is a kind of uh, equivalent to what's called a weakly holomorphic modular form by some observation of Borchers, right? Okay, so in other words, in some ways, the principal part of the weakly holomorphic modular form corresponds to the relation which you get among uh, among coefficient and modular form. Okay. And this conjecture that this algebraicity of higher Green's function, Zagier's, Grossman Zagier's conjecture, was proved in uh, many cases, in a few cases rather, by Zhang himself under some conditions, uh, the Shou Zhang, Anton Mellet, uh, Vyazovska, who just won the, this is the thesis, uh, uh, this guy called Yajun Zhao, who's a physicist, and then more recently, Brunier Ellen Yang. And their idea was to show that. Basically, you can realize this linear combination of, of uh, higher Green's functions as a Borchers lift of, uh, of a certain weakly holomorphic modular form. Okay. And then using that, they prove the algebra. Okay. So if you put these two things, the fact that motivic cycles 
uh, also give you adversity, these, these higher chances. Yeah, give me a, yeah, I'm, I'm out of town, but just give me three more minutes. Okay. Uh, this suggests there should be a relation between, uh, on the one hand, uh, weakly holomorphic modular forms, right? Uh, of some weight, weight half minus k, and uh, indecomposable cycles in the morphic homology of certain morphic homology to be right? And what happens is here, you look at the regulator and you get a certain linear common higher Green's function. There you look at the Borchers lift and you get some higher Green's function. And so therefore you should expect that given a weakly holomorphic modular form of a certain type, you should be able to get a motivic cycle whose regulator is the Borchers lift of that weakly holomorphic. So there is some evidence of that. In fact, I think Borchers proved the gross zagier theorem that uh, Higner devices give you coefficients, Higner points give you coefficients of model forms using this idea, okay? But this can also be stated kind of nicely in terms of, so there's an exact sequence in the theory of uh, weakly holomorphic model forms, which is from weakly holomorphic model forms to weak mass forms to classical model forms of weight two minus K, right? And uh, here on the other hand, you have this localization sequence. And somehow there should be a link between these two exact sequences. Uh, yeah. So k equal to zero is the work of Borchers. Okay. When k is equal to one, uh, there is some evidence. In other words, there are weakly holomorphic model forms with uh, uh, whose principal part is like one over q to the d or some d, and that implies that it should give you uh, a motivic cycle whose boundary whose 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 uh, boundary is supported when uh, on this Humbert surface with there in D. So more or less what we have. So, uh, yeah. So our cycles, uh, yeah. Ah, and there are a few more comments, I'm sorry. So uh, these cycles can be constructed also in the arithmetical case. And in the arithmetical case, one has to, make, to link it with uh, uh, any sort of uh, these conjectures or balance and block or special value conjectures. Uh, you need sort of what you call integral motivic comedy classes. So you need sort of them to have no boundary. And I don't know, I mean, maybe they can be used to get that. I can't show they're non-trivial. I can show you get some integral classes, but I can't show they're non-trivial, okay? And last week, uh, Brumer asked me a question about Puma surfaces of non uh, principally polarized abelian surfaces, okay? That seems to lead to a similar theory of, uh, you know, the Kuma surface being, uh, so in the case of principally polarized abelian surfaces, the Kuma surface is a double cover of, of uh, uh, P2 ramified at six points tangent to a conic. In, uh, if you have a polarization type one comma two, you get a double cover of P2 with six lines, which meet at three points. And so some much of what we do can be sort of extended to that case, I think, okay. And uh, we only talked about uh, the case of Chow 2 1, but the same questions uh, can be asked in higher Chow P1 or higher these things. And uh, I suppose I have no idea how to get cycles there okay, at the moment. But uh, yeah, let's see. So I think I'll stop there. I'm sorry if I took a few minutes uh, over time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's thank uh, Professor Shrikant then for the nice talk uh, okay any questions uh, okay so till then i had a question this uh, green function that you defined yeah uh, right. g of x comma y as uh, hmm. It came as a pairing between. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the fact that the greens, it yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So it came as a pairing between the regula eta, regulator, regulator, and eta y. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Before this, uh, before this. Um, no, that the regulator thing. Uh, this one. Uh, before that, there is a just g, not g one, g two. Uh, this one. Yeah, this is the same. I mean, Zhang uses this to get the height pairing kind of thing. I see. So this and this this can be kind of related to the height pairing of Sx and Sy. So uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
ഇന്റർസെക്ഷൻ <laughs> right uh-huh. okay so uh, uh so if i take an ah, sorry i should be starting with yeah so if i take a general element of this motivic cohomology uh, uh, any of this motivic cohomology group and i look at its regulator uh, evaluated uh, mm-hmm. uh then three of them three of the in this uh, family over a modular modular family right then in for three of those one one classes you will just get log of some function okay mm-hmm. and in the fourth one you get the g2 okay so mm-hmm. so uh what do i mean to say uh, where, where is the argument now here this argument that this uh uh this thing this will hold for all y because uh so these are y which are the close point I mean, this close will hold for for the generic point because eta in the generic fiber itself it's uh, it's uh, yeah this will hold for all y right mm-hmm. because okay. eta y is gener- represented by an algebraic cycle so i can just take that that algebraic cycle and intersect with this so you'll get something in this this uh, motivic cohomology group and the will be log of some function so what mm-hmm. you will get is that the uh, regular so the regulator of z and uh, uh, say eta not eta y that's correct okay omega y uh, uh is some log of some f f uh, f y for all y mm-hmm. okay so in particular at c at a at a cm point ah i should also mention yeah this is algebraic uh, so it, at a cm i did not mention that clearly but if f is a this is some algebraic function and this is some algebraic point so the value if y is algebraic and f is algebraic then the f of y is algebraic and So the log of the algebraic number, which I did not quite say why it was called an algebraic number earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for decomposable cycles, and yeah, well, actually for decomposable cycles with c comma a, you will, the regulator will just be log of uh, log of a times uh, integral of c of right. So it's basically log of a. This is some number. Acha acha. Some rational number times log. <clears throat> yeah this number well if 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 you had eta y then this thing would be zero because this eta y is sort of orthogonal to the uh, generic neuron severity okay mm-hmm. but otherwise it will be something it will be just some number right this mm-hmm. is it will just be the intersection of those two cycles right right mm-hmm. it just be the intersection number of two cycles coming right okay. nice okay yeah the point is that in a, in when you have cm basically all cycles are in de- are decomposable so so there's no choice so that's why it's log of something that's on the way right in the cm fibers because the rank of the neuron severity is 4 there are no in decomposable cycles anymore so uh, uh, yeah okay i mean not something but that's it so um, that's why you don't have you get the log of an algebraic number Uh, are there any more questions? No, I think. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, we can end the session. Okay. okay. Thanks, Rakesh, for sharing this. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Professor, for these two wonderful talks on K3 surfaces. Thanks. Thanks. All right, then. Uh... Phone, you can end the meeting and live stream both.